John. Hello, 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 and welcome to Over Coffee. Oh, I thought hey, you were uh, going to do something different. Oh, uh, you no, know, because every time I say good morning, then you guys always get on my case for saying no, good morning. For no, sure. this it's only against Dave. I already told Dave that you were going to get the you were going to get the opening. No, I know that, but like whatever, I I instinctively chose not to. You know, whatever. This is Over Coffee. <laughs> it happens three days a week. I'm John. That's Rich, and Doug is somewhere. <laughs> we're talking about stuff. How was your guys' weekend? It was uh, it was good. It, it was pretty good. I put up an awning this weekend. Cool. So I learned how to do that. Um, it was a lot easier than than I expected. So I did that. Um, I had some really good Chinese food yesterday. And uh, oh boy, did I play any games? I played uh, Zomboid in preparation for uh, the upcoming. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, tonight we gotta we gotta lay down that schedule and change it a little bit, uh, because we need somebody for the twenty second. Because I'm I realize I probably will not be here for the twenty second. So I'll do I'll do the following, which is which will be cool. uh, neither will I, unfortunately. So all right, let, let's figure that out. Since since two of us aren't going to be here, I'd rather it not be like a stranger. I'd rather it be like uh, John or Dave, if we can. Um, so, all right, we'll figure it out tonight. Anyway, uh, so Let's John, make it John, John, what what, yeah. were we, what what were we going to talk about? I mean, we could talk about a couple of different things. Um, oh, doing a little follow up about something we spoke about either last week or the week before. I mean, a couple of return trips to the pinball arcade in Bayshore. Yeah. Uh, high score pinball. Anything? Anything different? Like, like the so first they time they settled on get... prices. Yeah. They uh, settled on prices. Okay. Um, they um yeah they got a couple of new machines and like they've I've actually seen them do interviews and stuff like that here and there. So so talk to us about the prices. So they have basically a half hour, an hour, and an all day model. Ooh. If you're there for half an hour, it's ten dollars, which comes out to I'm sorry, it's ten dollars. <laughs> But it really comes out to like eleven dollars because of taxes. It's like ten eighty six or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but not their fault. They can't do anything about that. I think one hour, I think, is either fifteen or twenty dollars. So they charge you an extra five bucks to be there for you know a little longer. And then if you're there for the whole day, I think it's twenty five dollars. That's yeah, interesting. That's, so so yeah. twenty five dollars seems to be the deal, even if you're there for like two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna be there for if you're gonna be there for two hours solid, then or or longer, um, then you might as well pay for the whole day. Might as well. Know. You know what? And well, I think I wonder a consistent amount of people there. Like I've been seeing a lot of people, but when I've been stopping there, there's been at least probably another ten or twelve people there at minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, so I guess the question then the the question becomes so. So just thinking about the price a little bit, how many, like, you know, just like with all things, any subscription or anything, everybody ca uh, guarantees that there's not going to be as many actives as inactives. So how many people are going to overpay for the 25, for the old day and then not be there all day? You think they count well, on that? Well, think about if you do the math for, well, I mean, realistically, it's a mall. So like when they say old, all day, it's probably more like, I'm thinking like three hours or longer. Like, I don't think someone's going to spend six hours. Well, one, no one's going to spend six hours playing pinball. Two, no one's going to spend six hours playing pinball at a mall. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I've gone to places exclusively for the idea of playing pinball all day. Wait, really? really? It's been like a, it's it's been like a dust. He's been there exclusively. Exclusively or explicitly? I thought no. he said explicitly. Oh, explicitly. He probably said explicitly. Yeah. That I've gone to like, you know, like I've gone to like arcades and pinball places in other states where the whole draw is that's what you're doing for the day. But like, but granted, they usually have like a couple of hundred pinball machines and they have other stuff going on. And it's at like, you know, Asbury Park or somewhere cool, you know, like I'm not saying that this place isn't isn't bad, but it's really just a spot in the mall, you know. There's nothing really to like drive people just to this location. It's well, probably like, hey. My folks are going to be shopping for a while. Or, hey, my wife's going to be shopping for a while. She might be like two wait, and a half wait, hours or something like that. Wait, that was so sexist. Goodbye. 
<laughs> my significant other is going to be shopping. There you for go. Us. There you go. There you go. Remember, we got to be PC. Remember, this is a morning talk show. Point is, is that <laughs> when they charge $25, realistically, like if we break it down, it's paying for an hour and a half, but getting more than an hour and a half time. You know, it's the equivalent of. So, yeah, I think that, like, well, it also means, like, what if you go, like, if you're local enough, maybe you go in the morning and you come back in the afternoon, like. Well, that, that was going to be my question. I was actually waiting to break in and ask you, um, do you get, uh, like, do you get something? They give you a wristband. They give you a wristband and you can come back at all day at any time? Yeah. See, that makes I'm assuming. Okay. That makes sense, though, because, like, that would be a better, that, see, that's, because, like, hey, you get there in the morning, you play, like, an hour worth of you know, a pinball, right? You go shopping, you grab some lunch, you go back, you play another hour worth of pinball. You finish up your shopping, you go back, you play another hour worth of pinball. Hey, there you go. You got your all day's worth, right? Yeah, like you don't have to stay there the whole hour. It's not like once you come, you can't leave, you know? Right. I mean, they, they, I, I figure they keep you hostage and they're keeping your money hostage. That makes sense. Yeah. So the point is, is that like, yeah, I think they're probably going to do well for the three months that they're there. If they decide to extend the lease for longer, I don't know if the spot is either too small, or if um, or if the or if they have to pay significantly more rent, if it's going to cost more, unless the, the mall does the smart thing and is like, you know what, this works just fine and doesn't really cost us anything, so we might as well just let them keep using the space and continue the agreement, you know, rather basically like it's better to make a consistent flow of cash than to try to go for a significantly bigger increase. And risk it completely not working at all. So I guess my question is, um, how do they have a number of people, uh, a limit on the number of people that can can be in there? I haven't encountered that on the times that I've gone. Um, I'm going to guess that that's probably the case. I mean, they do have the machines spread out a bit, but I'm thinking like once it hits like a certain number. There might be like, look, you might have to maybe wait for people to come back, but that's more of a COVID thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just curious because, you know, you get a, I, I could see that running into people running into an issue paying for the whole day and then not being able to come back when they want to come back. I, I mean, not, not, nothing. In that case, in that case, like, I can't imagine the scenario. I mean, I, I can think of the scenario, but I think they'd probably do some kind of like a refund situation of like, hey, look, we're, we're not going to, we fund your whole thing, but we'll give you like a cash off or like maybe we'll comp you a couple of hours on a return trip. I guess, you know what? It's that, that's a good problem to have, actually. So I, I can understand mm. that. that. That would be good. So, all right. The interesting thing is that a lot of people, they, they have like a record, like a, a suggestions sheet of like, what are some suggestions? And like, you know, some people put private parties, other people put like, you know, tournaments and stuff like that. And a bunch of people put more arcade games. Because you only had like a small handful of arcade games, so it's interesting that like a lot of people were like, "Oh, I want more arcade games." Well, only I, I mean, come on, let's 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 be really honest here. It's a mall, and pinball is extremely analog for a di extremely digital age. Well, well so, hold, that's hold, kind of the appeal, though. That's right. the whole right. point. No, All right, well, that's it. that that's the appeal for some people, and I agree, John. But I think what people are looking, I think people that are going to the mall. They're not looking for. They're going to the pinball because it's got the. It's the only thing that has arcades in it. They want an arcade. That what that shows you. I, I, that, should, that shouldn't be a surprising answer. There, people are looking for an arcade ever since the arcades in the mall shut down. Yeah. And 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 uh, you know. You the mall rats. Like you ever go to? Because all right. So full disclosure, I went to the mall yesterday with my friend, um, my friend Brian. We went to the uh, Smith Haven Mall, which is right by us, right, and. You know, there's just it, it just it's just crowded with kids. Like you can see them. They're like they're all, I would say what, fifteen to nineteen maybe, right? They're all just like fresh out of high school or still in high school. And you have all these mall rat kids, right? And no, and only place they could really go is like is the stores, the centers of the mall, right? Where the places where the people congregate, I guess, and food for it. So if there's no, you know, you think about it, you know, in the 80s and 90s, right, there was arcades in the mall. So the mall rat kids would have a place to go, get out of, get out of everyone else's hair, right, and then, you know, and, and, and do that. But now, you know, we don't really have that anymore, right? Some some of them do, right? You have, Joe was it, Dave and Buster's, a couple of the malls, right? Um, bar one is a bar place, but I think that 
kids so, can go later. Please. Right, right. right. The, problem, the problem with David Buster's, and let, let's just be, let's just call it what it is. It's not an arcade, right? Yes. I uh, the Dave and Buster's is a ticket grab. That's right. what it is. Every one of their games is meant that you, you don't have arcades anymore. It's everything right. is everything is meant to um is to meant to earn you tickets so you can buy stuff in their shop. So. From what I've heard from people who talked about owning arcades, that's unfortunately like the dark truth. And that the like, here's the here's the, the problem. Truth. The dark games, when you play them for more than a few minutes, you kind of realize the limitations about them, especially like in the modern age of gaming, in the sense of like they were designed to suck quarters, they were designed to be fun for a little while, but eventually the difficulty just ramps up and it's like, this isn't that cool. So like, and especially once you remove like challenge or skill of like you could just free play this thing, it kind of becomes monotonous. So, so like, what do you, like, what do you mean by that? Like, cause I, I'll give you a, when I was when I was uh how old was I? It was like eight. I was nine, eight or nine. I think I was eight. Um, I I, I was, was a wee lad. <laughs> I was in uh, I lived in Virginia, right? And I was part of the boys' club. And Ooh, wait a minute. They, they had a, a rec room. They had a wait they had a rec room. It was it was like a it was like a it was like a uh, it was just like a, it was like a, a like an after school thing. Or a weekend oh, okay. that, that you they oh. would go to, and then they, they had there. Yeah, they had sports. They had uh, they had they had sports. They, there was a girls' club. There was a boys' club, and there was uh, you know, it was uh, it was where I went after school or some you know or the weekends, and it was great. They had uh, in their rec room they had arcade games, and I remember like groups of people would gather around Vanguard when it came out. John, Vanguard? No. So they would like they would gather around games like Vanguard and watch like this one kid who was excellent who almost got to the end. Then eventually, before the end of the summer, he would get to the end. And um, he made it. The guy made it. Yeah. So, so he, he you know, it was like uh, it was like things like that. Like I think those types of arcade games they were great. That's where I first saw Galaga. Um, and I forgot mm. some of the others. They didn't have a lot of arcade games because it was an open rec room, but. Were You're, they on free play or no? Uh, yeah. In this case, the games were on free play, but I wouldn't like. I, I don't mind dropping quarters into a game like that. Were they? Yeah, they were. Everything there was free because you were already paying for um, being part of being a member. Um, so it was, yeah, it was pretty life. good. Like they, that's where I learned how to play bumper. Too, so. <laughs> Let's be real. That's where this is where Rich became a hustler, and now that's spelled with an A at the end, not an ER. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think it was anything like that. I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> I just want you to know. So, but it was a, it was a, it was a lot of fun, and and you know, even going to like arcade games, I I go knowing that I'm gonna drop quarters, right? And that's fine. Well, obviously it's dollars now, but <laughs> it was fu it was okay for me to to think, okay, I'm gonna go drop dollars or I'm gonna drop quarters, and I know I'm gonna spend this much and. That's how long we're gonna be there. I'm just, gonna drop quarters. It was, it was just like picking the game. Like I don't like, like, I, I don't like the games where you're really just trying to get tickets. Like I was saying in David Buster's, that's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, I, well, you know, be be frank with you, I went to David Buster's. Right, the specific place that I would go to is the gun games, and the, and the um, air hockey tables, and they don't give you tickets. Oh no, you're right. They don't. You're right. But those are fun. I don't. I don't like the four person air hockey table. I just don't. I think it's great. Yeah. Reason. Here's my reasoning for it. Here's okay. my reasoning. For all right, it. All right. Complete and utter chaos. <laughs> it's just complete and fair utter enough. chaos. You know, and that's just. I don't know. That's why I think it's fun. Right, but I all understand. Right. But I understand where you're coming from. Because yeah. at the same time, if there's two people on the table, it's just stupid annoying because it's just a square instead of a. You know, like instead of a long. long yeah. Thing. No, okay, all right. I can understand. I can understand the appeal. I, I agree. But, I'm going to agree with Zynar. Dave and Buster's is a digital carnival, and then people need a way to pass the time a little. And I agree. And I think that's one of the things that arcades did. But unfortunately, here on Long Island, the arcades, specifically like in the Sunrise Mall and other malls, um, they attracted. They they wound up attracting the mall, like you said, the mall rats, and they would just rats. not leave. They would just loiter. 
I'm all that kids. Oh, they just right? smell like kids. Oh. So, so what? So what needs to be done is the mall itself needs to be involved with these things to help uh, to help police that type of stuff. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, let's be. Well, I, no, I like no. that. I I like the model, like of you know, if you keep all the games on free play, but then you charge for like the your time. I think right. that's great because you know what? Then it becomes a regular retail store, and then you can ask people to leave, and they're not just hanging out in the arcade. Yeah. So like, yeah. I, like I'm okay with that. I'm I, I, at first I, I I wasn't sure how I'd like about the time model, but I kind of like the time model because well, now a lot of places nowadays approach that model because yeah. if you think about it, you probably make more money than you used to as an arcade. I mean, I don't know how it if. Yeah, no, the time model is much better because think about it this way, right? Well, John, you're you're exactly 100% right. You know, if I went to an arcade and I sat down at a machine and I was like, oh, I'm really good at this machine and I entered $1 or like 50 cents into it, whatever it costs, and I, like my three lives lasted me, you know, a half hour maybe, right? Maybe I got really good at it and I was able to beat the game a bunch of times. So I would sit there. I'd end up spending like four bucks, you know, my entire time there where, you know, like if I'm there for like an hour and a half, two hours, right? Whereas doing the $25 or the $20, right, for the two hours that I would be sitting there, right? Um, now now the arcade is making a significant amount more on people that are, you know, at least halfway decent at these games, right? Yeah, I mean, it definitely... Like that's just the thing I was saying before about how some of these older games that, like, when I was a kid, which were very popular, which is when people say arcade games, I'm thinking that that's probably what... Well, it depends on who's putting the suggestion down. If it's if it's older people, then yeah, maybe they might want stuff like Phoenix or Galaga or things like that. But if it's younger people, they're probably thinking of stuff like, oh, I want more fighting games, or I want like, I want beat 'em ups, like I want like Final, you know, um, uh, um, Final, Final Fight, or, and, or in Street or, Fighter, or, 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 or Turtles, or The Simpsons. The problem, the, the problem with a lot of the arcade games when I was a kid is that they were designed like efficiently to be quarter munchers in right. the sense of like you could probably beat the first stage without too much difficulty like maybe maybe if you were not a great player you needed to drop another quarter down but it's like if you were at least somewhat competent you could easily beat the first stage of the simpsons arcade game no problem it's only when you get to the second stage and then when you keep going from there that it starts getting like exponentially harder and it's like okay at some point you're literally just hammering money into the game because the boss is just so cheap. And it's like, okay, back in the day, you'd be like, this is the accomplishment of like, I'm going to probably end up spending 10 bucks just on one game, but I'm going to beat the game. With free play, it's like, well, I could just attrition this game. Like, I could just brute force my way past the difficulty. But at that point, does the game lose some of its appeal or is it less fun? So. So let me just, a uh, couple of things from Zynar. Uh, Dave & Buster's also feeds you drinks and appetizers while you play. It's a moneymaker. That's true. Also, it, it, it's true. And uh, I'm sorry, one last thing. And I like sure. watching good players play games at the arcade, and it costs me nothing. And that's what I was talking about, right? You know, it costs nothing to to watch a good player, and that was fun. But if it's a if it's a retail model where you're paying by the hour, and I was going to go play a game anyway, think about the money they're making off me standing around just sure. watching right and i could see that happening like it's not going to be like the the thing but you know you get that you get that guy that's like super good at something people are going to stop and watch to see how the game is played people do it all the time <laughs> so, so john you're telling me <laughs> you're telling me if they didn't bring in gauntlet, if they don't bring in gauntlet a group of four people won't be at that game almost constantly no, but like the question is like if you bring in Gauntlet and like people start playing it now, are people gonna give it more than like ten minutes and realize like, wow, this is like um awesome. this is not as good as I thought it was, or this is like this is a lot more important when you're not pumping when you could just play for free and you're not like trying to like, oh man, how far can I go? It's not free. It's not free, John. I, it's I, not free. I think well, it's, it's, those, not, no. it's not it, at that point it becomes what do I want to spend my time on? And am I having fun spending the allotted time I have playing this game, which is... Uh, absolutely, know. absolutely, and here's why. Right outside the mall, there's a few restaurants. Inside the mall, there's a few restaurants. Um, and their food court isn't that bad uh, at the Bayshore Mall. So sure. I, I go there, I, I go with a, a group of friends, we get food, 
and then we go down to the arcade and we're going to spend the next couple of hours there. And I can I can absolutely see that happening. In your forties? Yeah. <laughs> look, look, if I turn around and say, listen, my D D group would go, right? I would like I, I think we'd go, hey, listen, what do you guys want to do one night? I don't know, why don't we go grab so and so when we grab a bite to eat here and then just go and play some arcade games. I think they would be I think people would jump at that. I mean it's not like an every weekend thing, but you know, as a once in a while thing, just like an escape room, once in a while, right? You do it once in a while. Right. Right. This would be once. A, this would be one more thing that you could add to your repertoire of things that you do once in a while. The repertoire. The yeah, repertoire. But the yeah, repertoire. my my thing is is that this place was designed to primarily focus on pinball. Right. Because yeah. It's like, yeah. There's not really there's not really that many places you can go to anymore that can do that. You know, it's, okay. it's, pinball is a whole different animal. That said, I understand that like people want to see more arcade games, but the issue is if they do it at the current spot. One, they run the risk of losing real estate because thanks to COVID, you can't have like an arcade where you used to, where the machines are literally stacked right next to each other. You have to space them up, which means you're taking, you're dedicating, even like the arcade games. Now, that's still, that's still, that's going to eventually go away. John. You put, so. you, know, you put coat racks in between them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that like, I, I, I get that it's going to go away eventually, but it could still take a bit of time. And in the meantime, yes, this agree. has to decide what it ultimately wants to be. Because I also think that if you add a bunch of arcade machines, I hate to say, no matter what you decide to do in the future, you can't take those machines away. Like, depending on what it is that you add, it's like, all right, well, I decide that I go from a place that has a bunch of games to now a place that has fewer games. I think that even if it's like a practical standpoint, I think word of mouth it might it, that that can maybe hurt the image of like ah they don't have as many games as they used to you know. Well, I want to just say like so here's the thing we like Dave and Buster's right you have all of these arcade games you have a bar and a dining area you have a pool area where you can play pool and you have a bowling oh, alley in almost every single one of them right and in your in your arcade area you have it sectionized right so one section is your ticket munching games right where like which was which was saying where it's a huge area just for the kids so they can earn little tchotchkes in their little ticket shop then you have um your medium and large size area for your your adolescents and your you know your young adults where they're just like oh all of these games are racing games fighting games you know um gun games whatever it is then you have your adult themed video games which are like your party games right um uh you know like uh the, the ones where you you have to do physical work where you're like trying to tap the screen or you have like the guessing games where it's like a real fortune or that the, those shows right where the guy, where everyone sits, in, not, sits together and they all like are drinking and deal and no and deal challenge each other yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, and they have a few of those there as well mind you those are new tickets but they are new tickets slower and they're they're really aimed towards like your 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 drinking crowd, right? Because it's like, oh, we're gonna drink and try to challenge each other's game of wits. Yeah, but the 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 problem is is that when you go to Dave and Buster's, right, a large majority of the games are ticket munching games. Number one, number two is the sections that usually have the arcade games. They're not classic arcade games. Almost every single one of them is a Call of Duty type game. Yeah, yeah, let me let me good. chime in with that real quick. Yeah, go ahead, John. So Dave and Buster's used to have more variety and used to have a lot more arcade games, especially like back when it was Jillian's. Yes. But over time, over time, as the necessity to fix those machines became more of a thing, and they stopped doing it because it's like, well, this is just not like either the the cost to the to you know the cost to benefit is just not worthwhile for us. They started moving towards more. What I've heard called attraction style games. Well, there you Light go. Games, racing games, where it's like, okay, like this is this game is big and exciting and it looks cool, but it's ultimately very superficial. Like it's designed to be like, hey, this is a game that's going to cost you literally a dollar to play, and you'll have maybe thirty seconds of gameplay in before you have to throw in another dollar. Or it's like just designed to like, no matter what happens, you're going to lose money somehow. Like there's yeah. nothing you can do. Like, like a good example would be like um, they have certain things like the Aliens game or the Terminator game, and it's like, okay, you could take a, a couple of hits, but it's almost impossible to avoid getting hit. Like there's so much stuff happening on the screen, and you have no indicator of like when something is going to hit you, 
that you literally just like, all right, I guess I have to like just understand that I'm going to play this knowing that there's no way I can finish it on just one coin, you know? And even then, like, you know, one play is like a dollar or two or whatever it is. And and it's all, uh, dude, don't get me wrong. Like, they look cool. They're neat. They add a bunch of features and stuff, but that's literally what they're designed to be. This is a spectacle or amusement style game. It doesn't play like an arcade game. It, instead, it plays like you're sitting at a ride in an amusement park. So I don't know if you guys are seeing this on Zoom or not, but I have here a gumball stuffed animal, which which Rebecca and I won from uh, Dave and Buster's. So oh my this God, it's like a cartoon bubble in your head, <laughs> right? Right. So so be, look at the head and the feet. And so this was on one of the games where where a stuffed animal lands on a flat surface, and it's slow. With every time that you play it, it clicks open like. Just one, bit. depending. It either clicks open one, two, or three, depending on where you land. And um, I, I was relatively good at it. I wasn't getting threes, but I, I consistently always getting twos. So we played for a little bit, and then we walked away because we knew it was just taking so long. Even my daughter saw it, right? And then we come back and saw that someone else had probably played the game and given up because his head was stuck <laughs> and his feet were hanging down. It was almost through. So we wound it still it still wound us play, paying uh playing like another ten to fifteen times to get that thing. But that's what she wanted. That's what she wanted to spend her card on. So but we you know, it. that's how a lot of those games are designed. Like I the know. other thing that people don't realize is those ticket machines, it's less about skill and more about like has it hit the necessary payout to make it like justifiable to drop something. Right. Even claw machines, claw machines are usually like the grip will be stronger or weaker depending on how much money has been received and then it'll reset itself again. So so the only thing that like one of the ones that my daughter was really good at is she was really good at the, there's a claw machine that just picks up tickets. Just gives you rolls of tickets. Uh, she's really good at that. <laughs> you know, she'll pick up like 100, the 200 or the 500 roll all the time. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that those things are just like I'm not saying you need to get rid of them. They're not. It is while it is what it is. Um, people like them, and people want to earn the the tickets so that they can go to the shop and, and you know and and pick up what they want to win, and that's okay, and I'm good with that. But their arcade selection is horrible. You know, it's all shooting games. And it's all, like John said, it's all those games that there's no way for you to win. There's no way for you to really progress unless you just keep dumping in, uh, in, dumping in quarters. And only if you have two people. And only if, you, you know, it's just not fun. They're not arcade games. They're shooter games, which are, which are a niche of arcade games. You know, they're not like the, the classic. That's my opinion. And now we listen to John Brooks. Oh, and spit. your opinion is valid. You know, I mean, what I wouldn't hate, I wouldn't necessarily hate an arcade that had a lot of the old, like, redemption games, like a lot of the ones that I played when I was a kid, because those can be fun. A lot of the newer ones, they're, they're just too busy. And it's, yeah, you know, especially because they're all digital. So it's like, okay, so this thing alone could be, like, tweaked. It's like why I don't like digital casinos. Like, any place that has, like, electronic table games, it's like, I know the games are already rigged enough to begin with. I don't want to play something that's, like, going to rob me of even more probability of winning. Well, a actually, if you go to, um, if you play a, a digital casino at a casino, um, the odds are posted for you. And, uh, actually, it's a European law. Whenever there's a game of chance, uh, the percentages need to be published for you so you understand what your chances are of getting it. This is a miracle. But anyway, I just want to notice, like, while John was talking, all I was thinking about was, you know, I got these scars. Because the toothpaste was, like, right around the, like, the, the corners of his mouth. Oh, I was thinking about uh, a vampire. Foaming uh, at the... Foaming at the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be more like a werewolf before he started to change, right? You know, yeah. and he's just like, you know, he's like, mm, you look tasty. I look, I know, I know by time. So the point is, is that I... He's like, let's like, avoid this conversation right now. <laughs> like, even, even like, like I said, I made a couple of trips there over the weekend myself. And I only really had to go around for about half an hour because I had other stuff I had to do. But, uh -oh. you know, I, I had no problem going there. And, like, at the same time, 
The fact that they added some new, it, it let me play some games that I didn't play the first time around, and I was like, oh, I, like, yeah, I kind of enjoy this, and like, got better at them, and it sort of ma- it sort of making me think, like, man, it wouldn't be that much money to get a pinball machine. Like, it's just a matter of like, it's just a matter of like saving up the money or like figuring out how much would it, how many months would it take to. I just want to pay it off. I just want to also interject before we go over. I know, right? We're going over a little bit, but I think that adding arcade games would be good for them because that adds a demographic as well, right? If you think about it, you're going to get people in there that were, were aren't like too keen on pinball machines because they want to play this arcade game. But now that they're there, they're like, you know what? I have this time. Screw it. Let me try out pinball a little bit, right? So now, now you're drawing in a new crowd that may stay a little bit longer just to try something else out as well. That's my opinion there, and I think I think it's a, I think that's a val- that's a good reason to bring in arcade games. All right. You know? So John, take us home with your jacket on. As he's leaving his home. All right. So this has been over coffee. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, tune in again. I think tonight is World Salad. I believe it's the. Um, yeah, I, the problem is no, like, right? we spin we... the blend together. No, last week was a. Wasn't it? Wasn't no, last it? week we were remember. supposed to have our last week we were supposed to have our meeting and and everyone. Well, then, yeah, so last week had to have been an off week. So uh, today, yeah. So then today okay. we do have an episode of World Salad. Okay. Um, yeah, join us at nine o'clock for that, that and then join us again Wednesday and Friday for uh, over coffee. Uh, and we'll promote whatever other shows are going on those days. On those days, all right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's just it's good. <laughs> It's just yeah, funny. I'm focusing on getting ready, so like I can only allocate so much me- mental capacity. It's this perfectly is fine. So with this that, is on his coach. So thank you with that, thank you for watching. Um, so with that, thank you so much for joining us, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning from John's Pantry.